Hello, and welcome to another Wolfie's Way tutorial. Today, I'll be showing you some basic animation techniques for the frame-by-frame -frame style. I'll go over some animation terms and show you how to utilize them in your animations. If you watch the whole video and still have questions, feel free to comment down below. I'll try my best to help you with any of your art or animation issues. You can also recommend other things for me to cover in another tutorial. I'm currently making a list and checking it off as I go. And before I start the tutorial, here is some stuff you should know. If you want to understand the tutorial perfectly, be sure to watch the canvas, the part I'm drawing on, and the frame timeline at the bottom. It shows all the frames, the frame I'm on, and it shows if I copy and paste any frames. Also watch the layers on the side to see which one I'm on. With all that said, let's begin the tutorial, and feel free to follow along and animate with me. I'll be giving instructions in case you want to animate what I'm doing. Alright, to start off, what is frame by frame? Frame by frame is a 2D animation style that consists of hand-drawn frames. Actions in this type of animation are carried out by many differently drawn frames. What kind of frames are there in frame by frame animation though? The main two ones are called keyframes and in-between frames. Keyframes are the drawings that show something changing. For example, these two keyframes show two different expressions. They show the character going from mild to upset. But those two frames alone don't make an animation. They just set one up. They are there if you're planning and pacing. In between frames, on the other hand, make it an animation. They are the frames that make the mild expression turn into the upset expression. The more in between frames there are, the more smoother but also slower the animation is. Now I'll show you how to draw some in-between frames for these keyframes. Be sure to use onion skin and layers to your advantage. You should put the non-moving parts of your drawing on a separate layer from the parts that you are animating. This will make your animation cleaner and easier to fix. You won't accidentally erase something like the body while you were trying to erase the eyes. The other thing is onion skin, and we'll show you where to draw, which is essential for in-between frames. To start, I am going to copy and paste the body to this first in-between frame. Now I'm going to start drawing the eyes and ears using the symmetry tool. They will start to slowly move and go down. If you want to keep your animations realistic, start the animated movement slow, speed it up in the middle, and then end it slow. When moving in real life, we have to build up that speed, and then we slow down when we get nearer to our ending point, like running. Keep that in mind when you animate characters doing actions. For the next in-between frame, I'll just copy the last frame I was on and erase the animated part. Now the eyes and ears will move a little more. The speed has picked up a bit. For your reference, you can now draw this frame in the middle of the two visible onion skins. Once this frame is done, I'll show you what everything looks like so far. Now we have an animation. The character's expression is clearly changing, but it's not quite done yet. The animation is a bit stiff, it ends suddenly. This can be fixed easily with another kind of in-between frame. I call it the settling frame. It's basically a redraw of the last keyframe to make it end a little less stiff. The more exact the redraw is, the better it will look. The settling frame can be placed before or after the last keyframe that it is based upon. It's up to you, really. Sometimes it will look better before it, or after it. Depending on how well you redrew it, putting it before can sometimes give the animation a little bounce as the animation settles. I'm going to keep mine in front of the keyframe because it looks a little better that way. And so, this expression change animation is complete. There is another thing I can show you about in between frames though. I call it exaggeration, and I will display it through an animated eye blink. Before my character here gets upset, I'm going to make them blink once. I'll go through the same process again. The first movement will start slow. The eyes will only lower a little bit at first. The next frame will pick up a bit. The eyes will lower more than they did the first time. They are about halfway to closing. And now the eyes will finally close. Follow this frame up with a settling frame because the eyes will not open immediately. It should stay closed for at least one more frame. This next frame will be exaggerated to make the eye blink a little more realistic. Instead of opening up slow, 
it's going to immediately jump up higher than the normal eye height. Not unrealistically high, but just enough to be noticed. Then this eye blink can be finished with a settling frame. The eye needs to settle and adjust itself. Without the settling frame, the blink might end stiffly. And there you have it, an eye blink. Now, with all the main animation done, all I have to do is clean up the excess lines. I'll cut this part of the video out and just show you what the cleaned up and finished animation looks like. Now let's see what it looks like without the extra frames, such as exaggeration and settling. See the difference? The animation is okay without them, but with them it looks so much better. Now that I've gone over the main thing of keyframes and in-between frames, I have two extra things to show you. The first one is what I call a static loop, but it is probably more known as voiling. I call it a static loop because you're animating something staying still. It makes something look alive and not like a statue. It's moving, but not in the sense of it performing an action, if any of that makes sense. This kind of animation is just a bunch of settling frames, basically. To make it, you just need to redraw a keyframe over and over again. To have a loop, I recommend redrawing the initial frame three to four times. Also, try to keep boiling slow. It tends to look better when it's not very fast. Boiling is great for sketchy style animations or AMVs. It can also be good for animating silhouettes or something scary. It's great to do when you're bored because you can be as messy as you want with it. Here's an example I did where the outline is very messy. I took my drawing tool and just went over back and forth on the outline of the character. The next and final thing I want to show you is smear frames. You've probably seen smear frames in cartoons before. A weird in-between frame that is used to make a character perform an action. A smear frame is basically a bunch of in-between frames crammed into one drawing. So, why use smear frames? Well, when you're animating something really dynamic, a lot of in-between frames would be necessary to make the character go from one point to another. Using a lot of in-between frames can prevent you from animating something that's very fast. Smear frames fix this problem. They can make the character perform the action in one solid frame. Not only does it save time, but it also makes the animation faster than a bunch of in-between frames would. Here's what it looks like. The canine here is raising its tail swiftly, all in this one frame. Smear frames are anything but realistic. They are smears between actions, like motion blur. Smear frames can be drawn in practically any way, seeing as how unnatural they are. But keep this in mind. The smear frame should be in between the starting position and the ending position. Here's how I drew this one. I start with the tail lifting just a tiny bit off the ground. Then I draw the other part of the tail close to the highest point. Now what to do with the middle? Well, just connect the top to the bottom. You just have to imagine the path that the tail will go through and draw it all in this one picture. That's essentially it. It's up to you what you use smear frames for, but depending on what you're doing, in-between frames might be better for the job than a smear frame. So experiment and do what looks better to you. Well, now you should be familiar with some basic animation terminology and techniques. I hope this video was helpful, and if you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. Thanks for watching, and have a nice rest of your day. Bye!